Hey you guys, welcome back. We're here today with the Amano RC45711, as well as my other two favorite bits. They're each from a different company called Bitstack that makes similar bits using the same carbide inserts, actually, as the Amano one for this uh, surf one inch surfacing bit. And this 60 degree V bit is a good budget purchase as well. And let's jump right into how to set up the inserts so that they are properly aligned. Now I've gone ahead in this one and purposely put it in here kind of offset to one side. And you can actually see it here, how this section here protrudes out just a bit. And on the other section, it clearly does not. So when we do run a test carve, I'm gonna go ahead and slightly lower this down manually by hand until it just barely starts to touch the board. And I'm gonna actually turn it while doing that. And I'll do that twice just so you can kind of see two different carves of how it goes in right there. And right here you can see that first one where I went a little bit deep and right here is that super shallow one where it just barely touched. And you can see that we've got a circle. It's not carving a specific, this should be a little tiny indent, just the tip of the bit touching. And so we've got this, this circle, right? And over here you can see the same thing happening. The, uh, the tip is clearly not concentric to the middle of the rotation. So what we're going to do to correct for that is we're going to loosen this screw here using a flathead screwdriver. Other ones from Bitstack use a Torx that they include. It's a T15 Torx driver and uh, that's how we do that similar step with these to loosen that and realign them. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this one. I'm going to try and do it in the actual call it here without taking it out. I'm just going to go ahead and press it to that side. So here's the slot. We're actually going to press it towards the other side. So I'm going to use this thumb here to press it. You can use a block of wood if you don't have uh, super thick skin like I do. And I like to loosen it and tighten a couple times and then just kind of put a nice bit of torque on there with that, that hand. So now that it's down there in place, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down whilst spinning it again. We've actually got a few different points there where I've gone ahead and cut. You can see it's not quite perfect doing this with pine, but the secondary cut compared to the first one there, let's see if I can get these both in the same screen. Oh, there we go. That's looking not too bad. Hopefully you guys can see that. But there we can see the original ones over on the side with the circles and the new ones there showing a lot finer point. There we've gone ahead and set the 90 and we can repeat that same sort of thing on the 60 here. And then for the surfacing bit, it's more so getting the top two parallel across the top and then having that be perpendicular to the bit itself. The best way that I've really found to do that is to utilize the backings and they are actually quite straight. So just by loosening these and then pressing it down and into the backing there, uh, you're able to tighten it back up and have the two of them pretty well set perpendicular to this bit. So the way that I've also done this too is taking a, a, a nice look at it from this edge here down to the bottom, verifying that the gap on this side matches the one on this side and doing the same thing along this edge and comparing that to the other side as well. And then with, with that really said and done, the way that this one is set up with these two walls in here, they do a good job of making a nice 90 degree angle by themselves that is perfectly aligned to the shaft. So when you do put it in there and spin it, you will have them measuring the same points front to back as you rotate it. 
So if you were to do the same sort of test like you did with the V-bit, what you would do is lift this up, check with a feeler gauge the front tip, rotate it around, and check this other tip. And that they should read the same thing. So I'll add a link in the description below to these bits. So then for this 60 degree V-bit by bit stack, I like to chuck it up in the CNC and then kind of press it down into a board like this and use that downward force to hold it back against these two back sides and then tighten the screw with the supplied uh, T15 torque driver that they do put in each of these two kits from Bitstack. They do also supply extra screws I do recommend that you check that the screws are tight and do this, you know, sort of uh, divot test to make sure that the insert is centered properly on uh, these V-bits. In any V-bit that you get that has a carbide insert like this, just to kind of make sure. I don't recall which one of these I got, whether it was the 60 or the 90, that the screw wasn't actually tight when I first arrived. So, you know, just something to keep in mind always double check it. And then on the 60 as well, you can see, like I mentioned with the uh, servicing bit on the back side here, you can see that spacing. And if it was like offset crooked to one side, you would notice that the spacing doesn't quite match from side to side. And that would be a dead giveaway that it's not quite center. So if I was able to help you out today, I really appreciate it if you hit the like button. And if you are into CNC tutorials and tips like this, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss my future posts. Thank you guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Check out this video next.